Dear people watching and listening, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Kindly support me through Patreon so that I can keep making such audiobooks for you. For your ease, the video has been divided into chapters, which can be found in the description. Izharul Haq, The Truth Revealed by Molana M. Rahmatullah Keranvi. This is the very book which empowered Sheikh Ahmad Didat with the knowledge of the Christian scriptures, which enabled him to challenge the claims of the Christians on Islam, the divinity of Jesus Christ, and their own religion as a whole. The book, internationally recognized as one of the most authoritative and objective studies of the Bible, was originally written in Arabic under the title Izharul Haq by the distinguished 19th century Indian scholar Molana Rahmatullah Keranvi and appeared in 1864. The book was subsequently translated into Urdu and then from Urdu into English by Muhammad Wali Razi. The present publishers are bringing the Wali Razi translation out as a series in several installments of which this is the three parts put together. Molana Rahmatullah wrote the book in response to the Christian offensive against Islam in British Indian and specifically to counter the subversive attack made by the Reverend CCP Fonder who had written a book in Urdu entitled Mizanul Haq, the open intention of which was to cast doubts into the minds of the Muslims about the authenticity of the Qur'an and Islam. Part 1. The Books of the Bible The Books of the New Testament The First Division of the New Testament there are 20 books in the first part of the New Testament. These 20 books are believed to be genuine and authentic by the Christians. 1. The Gospel of Matthew Matthew was one of the 12 disciples of the Prophet Jesus Salam. This book is considered to be the oldest of the Gospels. The book begins with the genealogy of the Prophet Jesus salam, and describes his life and teachings up until his ascension to the heavens. 2. The Gospels of Mark Mark was a pupil of Peter, the disciple of the Prophet Jesus salam. This Gospel begins with the prophecies made by previous prophets regarding the coming of the Prophet Jesus salam. It describes the life of Jesus salam up until his ascension to heaven. It consists of 16 chapters. 3. The Gospel of Luke Luke was a physician and was a companion of Paul and travelled with him on his journeys. As mentioned in Colossians chapter 4 verse 14 and Acts chapter 16. He died in 70 AD. His gospel begins with the birth of the Prophet John alayhi salam, the Baptist, whose Quranic name is Yahya alayhi salam, and covers the life of Jesus alayhi salam up until his ascension to heaven. It has 24 chapters. 4. The Gospel of John This book also begins with the birth of John the Baptist salam, and describes the events from the birth of the Prophet John salam, to the ascension of the Prophet Jesus salam. It consists of 21 chapters. It should be noted here that John the son of Zebedi, the disciple of Jesus salam is certainly not the author of this book. Some of the Christians claim that the author of this book may be John the Elder, but this claim too is not supported by any historical evidence.
These four books are also called the four evangels. Sometimes the word evangel is also used for all the books of the New Testament. The word is of Greek origin and means good tidings and teaching. 5. The Acts of the Apostles It is said that this script was written by Luke to Theophius. It includes the acts and achievements of the disciples of the Prophet Jesus salam after his ascension. It particularly describes the journeys of Paul until his arrival in Rome in 22 AD. It has 28 chapters. 6. Epistle of Paul to the Romans This is a letter written by Paul to some of his Roman followers. Paul was a Jew and an enemy of the followers of Jesus salam in the beginning. Some time after the ascension of Jesus salam to heaven, he suddenly appeared and claimed to have received instructions from Jesus salam. 7. First Epistle of Paul to the Corinthians This is Paul's first letter to the Corinthians and it consists mostly of teaching and injunctions regarding unity among the Christian. At that time, they were involved in various disputes. Chapter 7 includes some injunctions concerning matrimonial relations. In Chapter 8, the evils paganism and the Christian's attitude towards a pagan society are discussed. The last few chapters include a discussion on atonement and the hereafter. Chapter 16 describes the blessings of alms given and donation for Christianity. 8. Second Epistle of Paul of the Corinthians this letter was also written to the Corinthians by Paul and contains 16 chapters. These chapters include religious instructions, guidance, and suggestions regarding the discipline of the church. From chapter 10 to the end, Paul speaks of his ministerial journeys. 9. Epistle of Paul to the Galatians Galatia was a province of Rome in the north of Asia Minor. This letter was written to the churches of Galatia in early 57 AD. Paul had heard that the people of Galatia were being influenced by another religion. In this letter, he tries to prevent them from conversion. 10. Epistle of Paul to the Ephesians Ephesus was an important trading city of Asia Minor. There was a great house of worship there to the goddess Diana. Paul turned it into a great center of Christianity in three years of great efforts, as mentioned in Acts chapter 10 verse 19. In this letter, he gives some moral instructions to the people. 11. Epistle of Paul to the Philippians This letter of Paul is addressed to the people of Philippi, a city of Macedonia. This is the first city in Europe where Paul preached Christianity. He was arrested there. This letter includes his moral teachings and exhortations for unity among the Christians. 12. Epistle of Paul to the Colossians This letter of Paul is addressed to the people of Colossae, a city of Asia Minor. Paul is encouraging them to remain Christians and calls upon them to abstain from evil deeds. 13. First Epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians 
This letter of Paul was written to the people of Thessalonica, a city of the province of Macedonia, which is a part of Greece today. He discusses in this letter the principles which bring about God's pleasure. It also speaks of other subjects. It has five chapters. Fourteen, Second Epistle of Paul to the Thessalonians This letter, containing only three chapters, offers Paul's encouragement to the Thessalonians on their good deeds and some instructions regarding their general behavior. Fifteen, First Epistle of Paul to the Timothy Timothy was a pupil and disciple of Paul. Paul had great trust and admiration for him. The letter contains descriptions regarding rituals and ethics. Sixteen. Second Epistle of Paul to Timothy This second letter to Timothy speaks of certain people who had converted to other religions and also includes instructions to Timothy about preaching and also some predictions for the last ages. It has four chapters. 17. Epistle of Paul to Titus Titus was also a companion of Paul on some of his journeys. Paul had great love for him. Paul left him in Crete so that he could preach there. This letter had three chapters and gives preaching instructions and details of the prerequisites of bishops. 18. Epistle of Paul to Philemon Philemon was also a companion of Paul and had travelled with him. The letter was written by Paul when he sent Onesimus to Philemon. 19. First Epistle of Peter Peter was one of the closest apostles of Jesus a.s. The study of the New Testament shows that Paul had some differences with him in later years. The letter was addressed to the Christians who were scattered throughout the northern part of Asia Minor, that is the people of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia and Bithynia. The main purpose of this letter was to encourage the readers who were facing persecution and suffering for their faith. And 20. First Letter of John The Second Division of the New Testament In this division of the New Testament, there are seven books. The genuineness and divinity of these books is doubted and debated by the Christians. Some lines from the first letter of John are also not believed to be authentic. Twenty one. The Epistle of Paul to the Hebrews. The Jews are also called the Hebrews. The word has an association with Abir a title given to the Prophet Jacob a.s. Hebrews is also used for Christians. The letter was addressed to a group of Christians who were on the way to abandoning the Christian faith. The writer encourages them in their faith. 22. The Second Epistle of Peter this letter from Peter is addressed to the early Christians. Its main concern is to combat the work of false teachers and false prophets. It also speaks of the final return of the Messiah. 23. The Second Epistle of John The second letter of John was written by John to the dear lady and her children. According to the Christians, 
The lady probably stands for the local church. Twenty four. The third epistle of John. This letter was addressed to Gaius, one of the pupils of John and a church leader. The writer praises the reader for his help to other Christians and warns against a man called Diotrephus. Twenty five. The general epistle of James. This James is not the Apostle James, the son of Zebedee and brother of John. The writer is James, the son of Joseph the Carpenter. He is frequently mentioned in the Book of Acts. The letter is a collection of practical instructions and emphasizes the importance of actions guided by faith. 26. The General Epistle of Jude Jude is a brother of the James who was one of the twelve apostles. He is mentioned in John chapter 14 verse 22. The letter was written to warn against false teachers who claimed to be believers. Jude is not the Judas who is said to have betrayed Jesus alayhi salam. 27. The Revelation The Revelation of John is a collection of visions and revelations written in symbolic language. Its main concern is to give its readers hope and encouragement in their suffering for faith. 28. Review of the Books by the Councils it is important to note that in 325, a great conference of Christian theologians and religious scholars was convened in the city of Nicaea under the order of the Emperor Constantine to examine and define the status of these books. After thorough investigation, it was decided that the epistle of Jude was genuine and believable. The rest of these books were declared doubtful. This was explicitly mentioned by Jerome in his introduction to his book. Saint Jerome was a Christian scholar and a great philosopher. He was born in 340 AD. He translated the Bible into Latin. He was a famous bibliographer and wrote many books on the Bible. Another council was held in 364 in Laodicea for the same purpose. This conference of Christian scholars and theologians not only confirmed the decision of the Council of Nicaea regarding the authenticity of the Epistle of Jude, but also declared that the following six books must also be added to the list of genuine and believable books. The Book of Esther the Epistle of James, the Second Epistle of Peter, the Second and Third Epistles of John, and the Epistle of Paul to the Hebrews. This conference pronounced their decision to the public. The Book of Revelations, however, remained out of the list of the acknowledged books in both the councils. In 397, Another great conference was held called the Council of Carthage. Augustine, the great Christian scholar, was among the 126 learned participants. The members of this council confirmed the decisions of the two previous councils and also added the following books to the list of the divine books. The Book of the Songs of Solomon, the Book of Tobit, the Book of Parage, Ecclesiasticus, and the first and second books of Maccabees. At the same time, the members of this council decided that the Book of Parage was a part of the Book of Jeremiah because Parage was the deputy of Jeremiah. Therefore, they did not include the name of this book separately in the list.
Three more conferences were held after this in Trulot, Florence and Trent. The members of these meetings confirmed the decision of the Council of Carthage. The last two councils, however, wrote the name of the Book of Parrot separately. After these councils, nearly all the books which had been doubtful among Christians were included in the list of acknowledged books. The Books Rejected by the Protestants The status of these books remained unchanged until the Protestant Reformation. The Protestants repudiated the decisions of the councils and declared that the following books were essentially to be rejected. The Book of Parage, the Book of Tobit, the Letter of Jude, the Song of Solomon, Ecclesiasticus, and the first and second books of Maccabees. They excluded these books from the list of acknowledged books. Moreover, the Protestants also rejected the decision of their forebears regarding some chapters of the Book of Esther. This book consists of 16 chapters. They decided that the first nine chapters and three verses from chapter 10 were essentially to be rejected. They based their decisions on the following six reasons. 1. These words were considered to be false even in the original Hebrew and Chaldean languages which were no longer available. 2. The Jews did not acknowledge them as revealed books. 3. All the Christians have not acknowledged them as believable. 4. Jerome said, that these books were not reliable and were insufficient to prove and support the doctrines of the faith. 5. Claus has openly said that these books were recited but not in every place. And 6. Esupia specifically said in chapter 22 of his fourth book that these books have been tampered with and changed, in particular the second book of Maccabees. Reasons number 1, 2 and 6 are particularly to be noted by the readers as self-sufficient evidence of the dishonesty and perjury of the earlier Christians. Books which had been lost in the original and which only existed in translation were erroneously acknowledged by thousands of theologians as divine revelation. This state of affairs leads a non-Christian reader to distrust the unanimous decisions of Christian scholars of both the Catholic and the Protestant persuasions. The followers of Catholic faith still believe in these books in blind pursuance of their forebears. The Absence of Certainty in the Bible it is a prerequisite of believing in a certain book as divinely revealed that it is proved through infallible arguments, that the book in question was revealed through a prophet, and that it has been conveyed to us precisely in the same order, without any change through an uninterrupted chain of narrators. It is not at all sufficient to attribute a book to a certain prophet on the basis of suppositions, and conjectures. Unsupported assertions made by one or few sects of people should not be and cannot be accepted in this connection. We have already seen how Catholic and Protestant scholars differ on the question of the authenticity of certain of these books. There are yet more books of the Bible which have been rejected by Christians. They include the Book of Revelation, the Book of Genesis, the Book of Ascension, the Book of Mysteries, the Book of Testament and the Book of Confession, which are all ascribed to the Prophet Moses salam. Similarly, a fourth Book of Ezra is claimed to be from the Prophet Ezra salam, 
and the book concerning Isaiah's ascension and revelation are ascribed to him. Salam. In addition to the known book of Jeremiah, there is another book attributed to him. There are numerous sayings which are claimed to be from the prophet Habakkuk. There are many songs which are said to be from the prophet Solomon salam. There are more than 70 books other than the present ones of the New Testament which are ascribed to Jesus salam, Mary salam, the apostles and their disciples. The Christians of this age have claimed that these books are false and are forgeries. The Greek Church, Catholic Church and the Protestant Church are unanimous on this point. Similarly, the Greek Church claims that the third book of Ezra salam, is a part of the Old Testament and believes it to have been written by the Prophet Ezra salam, while the Protestant and Catholic Churches have declared it false and fabricated. We have already seen the controversy of the Catholics and Protestants regarding the books of Parrish, Tobit, Jude, the Song of Solomon, Ecclesiasticus and both the books of Maccabees. A part of the book of Esther is believable to the Catholics but essentially rejected by the Protestants. In this kind of situation, it seems absurd and beyond the bounds of reason to accept and acknowledge a book simply for the reason that it has been ascribed to a prophet by a group of scholars without concrete support. Many times we have demanded renowned Christian scholars to produce the names of the whole chain of narrators, right from the author of the book to prove their claim but they were unable to do so. At a public debate held in India, one of the famous missionaries confessed to the truth that the absence of authoritative support for those books was due to the distress and calamities of the Christians in the first 313 years of their history. We ourselves examined and probed into their books and took great pains to find any such authorities but our findings did not lead beyond conjecture and presumptions. Our impartial search in the sources of their books showed that most of their assertions are based on nothing but presumptions. It has already been said that presumption and conjecture are of no avail in this matter. It would be quite justified on our part if we refused to believe in these books until we had been given some arguments and authorities to prove their genuineness and authenticity. However, for the sake of truth, we still go forward to discuss and examine the authority of these books in this chapter. It is quite unnecessary to discuss the authority of each and every book of the Bible and we intend to examine only some of them.